Let's take a look at an important idea in work and energy, and that is how you calculate the work done on an object when the force is varying. So here we have a graph of the force as a function of distance. And so as the object moves the first 0.2 meters, the force increases from zero up to 10 newtons. Then for the next 0.2 meters, it stays at 10, then it drops to four, stays at four, finally drops to zero. And so one way to approach this is to remember work is force times distance. And let's just look at this first 0.2 meters here. So we're focusing on just this part of the graph. And so if you wanted to put the distance in, that's not a problem, 0.2 meters. But what would you put for the force? Clearly not zero, because there's definitely work being done on the object. It is moving. And 10 newtons would be overestimating it because the force uh, that was applied was not 10 newtons until the very end. So a compromise might be the average force. So we could average the final and the initial force and multiply by the distance. And so it would be 10 plus 0 over 2. We're just averaging two numbers together here times the distance. And so you get 1 joule. Uh, this is a good way to do it. It works, but only if this line is straight is it exact. And so we want to look at a more general idea. The work is the area under the curve, is the way it's usually stated. They really mean the area between the curve and the x-axis. And so for this first 0.2 meters of the motion, it would be the area of this triangle. Uh, you do have to watch it, though. If the line goes below zero, then the areas between the line and the x-axis, it would be this area. And so it would be negative. Uh, but in this case, we all have positive work, so uh, but just watch that. It's really the area between the curve and the x-axis. And so we know the area of a triangle is one-half the base times the height. The base is 0.2. The height is 10. And so one-half the base times the height gives me the same answer as using the average force. Uh, another way to do uh, work by area is to figure out the area of one of these squares on the graph. So if the graph is a grid, you can figure out the area per square and then multiply by the number of squares. And so in this problem, if you look, just pick any square. It's got a height of 2 newtons and a width of 0.1 and so 0.1 times 2 gives me 0.2 joules for every square and so how many squares are under the line here well you've got 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 cut in half so you have 5 squares times 0.2 joules per square and we get 1 joule of energy but however you want to do it it's 1 joule of energy here so let's work through the rest of these, and we'll look at all the different methods, but really you just need to use one of them. Uh, I would recommend uh, either that, that work as the area, or using the um, area per square idea. And so, whoops, gave away the answer. And so how about this next part? Well, this one we wouldn't have a problem with, right, because the force is constant. And so you just say, hey, work is force times distance. And so it would be 10 newtons times uh, 0.4 meters. No, you got to watch that. It's only 0.2 meters for this section of the graph. And so uh, you get 2 joules or newton meters of work. How about the area idea? Well, it's the area of a rectangle. It's going to look the same, right? The area is the height times the width, and so you got 10 newtons times 0.2 meters, and that comes out to 2 newton meters or joules. If you want to do the uh, area per square, we have now uh, 10 squares, and so the area is the... Um, 0.2 joules per square, so that's still the same, 0.2 joules per square times 10 squares and 2 joules. So that part is 2 joules. Uh, this one, a little trickier, let's take a look at it. And so you could use the average idea. 
And so what would the average force be if it started at 10 and ended up at 4? Well, that's just 10 plus 4 over 2. That's the average force. And so that's 7 times 0.2 meters. You've got to watch it again. The distance is only, for this section, 0.2. And so you get 1.4 joules. How about the area idea? Uh, if you know the area of a trapezoid, it's the average height, one half the average height times the base. And so one half, um, or it's the average height times the base. And so one half 10 plus 4 times 0.2. Wow, it's the exact same thing I just wrote up here. No surprise, because you're really doing the same thing. Uh, if you forget the area of a trapezoid, you could break it up into a rectangle and a triangle, and so that would work. The rectangle would be a height of 4 and a base of 0.2, and the triangle 1 half, the base is 0.2, and here's where you have to be careful. The height is not 10, right? The height is 6. And so you get um, 1 half... Um, 0.2 times 6, and so that's going to give you 6 joules, and that's going to give you, or 0.6 joules, that's going to give you 0.8 joules, and you get 1.4. Uh, want another way to do it? Sure you do. How many squares? 1, 2, 3, 4, and here I have 6 cut in half, and so there are 7 squares, and so 0.2 joules per square times 7 squares is 1.4 joules. Uh, hopefully this is seeming easy for you. Uh, you will get problems pretty much just like this. Maybe this one's even a little harder uh, than what you'll be asked to do on a quiz or a test. Make sure you're doing things correctly. And so it's a good idea to have multiple methods to check yourself. And we just got two more here to do. But we got 1.4 joules for that guy. And so this one's pretty easy again. We don't really need to uh, have a special method. It's just the force times the distance. And so it's going to be 0.8 joules. But if you want to use these other methods, the average force obviously is just 4. The area, the area of a rectangle, the height is 4. The base is 0.2. Same darn thing. And finally, the number of squares is 4. So 0.2 joules per square times four squares, always 0.8. And then finally, this last triangle. And so you can use the average idea. And so the work is the average force. It starts at four, ends up at zero. So four plus zero over two, averaging those two together, times the base, um, which again is 0.2. And so you get 0.4 joules. Whoops, not negative. Makes sense, right? It's half of what this one is because the line cuts it right in half. So if you see things like that, take advantage of them. And we could also use the area of a triangle. Area, one half the base times the height. 0.4 Whoops, the height is 4, sorry. And so 1 half the base times the height, 0.4 joules. And if you want to count squares, there's 4 cut in 2. And so it's 0.2 joules per square times 2 squares, 0.4. And so try this one on your own. You can make up your own graphs and try out to get the area, but you should be able to do it. If you add all those up, that might be the question on the quiz is what is the total work done. So if you add all those up, you get 5.6 joules. Now another way to state this idea is using the techniques of calculus. You'll see this, work is the area. This is saying the same thing. Uh, you do not need to do this for a graph like this. You would have to write an equation for each one of these lines and do them all separately. Uh, it would be a big mess. We'll learn more about how to use this uh, in the future, but when you see this, just think, oh, that means the area under a force 
distance graph. See you next time.